I've run into this issue uh, at a couple of venues, so I thought I'd create this video to explain how to do proper uh, wireless microphone frequency coordination uh, to avoid intermodulation products. Um, the frequency, especially when you have a large number of wireless microphones, the frequencies that you put on each uh, unit uh, have to be uh, set up in a way so they don't interfere with each other. So um, one way that you might see this problem manifest itself is you've someone's uh, inherited a wireless microphone system that's not too knowledgeable about it and one day they pick up interference from a local digital television station. Uh, so they go into the, the menus and they change the frequency on the receiver and the transmitter to something new um, and oh that that's you know that solved the problem there's no more interference. Then down the road uh, they start noticing static from other uh, wireless mic channels and um, they mistakenly assume that now they're dealing with some sort of interfer uh, reception problem where uh, they need to invest in expensive antenna amplifiers and passive antennas that need to be mounted outside in different areas. And in, in many cases that's not necessary. Uh, the static they're hearing is caused by the intermodulation products uh, that are generated when two body packs are in close proximity and are not on a, a correct frequencies. So I have here a picture of the Sennheiser Evolution Wireless 100 G3, uh, but you know th this this concept applies to all wireless microphones. Each manufacturer should provide you with uh, instructions on how to uh, properly uh, select your frequencies for where the area you'll be, you'll be operating in. So I'm just going to go to Sennheiser's website here, and I'll click on microphones and wireless systems. Over on the left, there's a, a link for a frequency finder. And this is your first step. You need to determine what frequencies you can work within uh, based on uh, nearby digital television stations. So you need to put in your zip code, and I'll just put in a zip code near me. Now your attenuation, uh, the mix, this, this def default is fine. Well, would help if I put that in the right feel. Okay. So red you cannot use. White you're not you're not supposed to use. Yellow you could use and green you can definitely use. All right. So let's click help just to verify that. Here, here again it confirms so vacant use these first yellow vacant with potentially strong um, should be possible red don't use uh, and the white is likely to cause interference a little non-intuitive you'd think both of these would be red so uh, and the system that we're looking at configuring is in the 500 megahertz band from 516 up so looking here, looks like I could use 516 to 524, then I gotta stay out of these, then I can use 536 to 554, then I would have to stay out of these, and then I could use um, 566 to 572. But in reality, you want to avoid even the first 100 kilohertz. Uh, so I wouldn't want to use 536.100. I would start at 536.125. All right. So now I'm going to go to Sennheiser's homepage and search for a tool that they provide for free called SIFM. And it's, here it is. And here again it explains to you this whole problem with intermodulation. Uh, while I was doing one facility I emailed Sennheiser Tech Support just to confirm I was doing everything correctly 
and uh, they had to escalate it. They referred to what I was doing as advanced. Uh, okay, and the person I was uh, put in contact with told me that this is a common problem that people buy these expensive Sennheiser systems mess up the frequencies and they complain that Sennheiser's crap or that they're not reliable and this guy's job is apparently to save installs and no Sennheiser reseller is required to understand this uh, anyhow so you download it's only for PC which is fine uh, I use everything and when you install it it launches a program that looks like this so we uh, let's go back to our frequency chart. Excuse me. All right. So first of all, we're going to enter our available range. Now, the um, microphones I'm configuring this in this example are using what's called Sennheiser frequency range A. That would be 516 to 558 megahertz. Okay, so it looks like we can use 516. So I'll put that in. And then we have to stop at 524, but I'm going to put in 523.875. We talked about leaving a 125 kilohertz buffer. Um, and then we can go from 536.1252. Five five three eight seven five. I think that's it because even though range A goes to five five eight, I can't use that. Okay, now we have to select our model, and I did confirm with Sennheiser that you can just go ahead and use uh, the G two standard. It's these parameters that uh, you want to use. Okay. All right. Now, I always run my uh, frequency searches to uh, avoid two transmitter intermodulation at the third harmonic, two transmitter intermodulation at the fifth harmonic and three transmitter intermodulation at the third harmonic. I, you know, I just want a, as clean a system as possible. I don't know how many people are going to be standing next to each other at once uh, close enough to cause this problem. I just don't want it to happen at all. And um, I'd like to get as many channels as possible. Now there's two ways to do this. Maximum search or, or without maximum search. Maximum search can take days to calculate and may find you a couple of extra frequencies. Uh, let's just click generate without maximum search. So it only found 10 and that's not very many. Now it found several proposals for 10. If I click export it'll uh, let me save these files somewhere. And then it'll open up a text file here um, so there's proposal 1, the 10 frequencies, then another proposal with 10 different frequencies. Now the thing with these are is only the frequencies within this proposal are guaranteed not to interfere with each other. If just one of these is bad, you really need to move the whole system over to another proposal. You can't just move the one bad frequency. Oh, I'll just take 550. No, okay, so these are all designed to be used together. All right, so you got to move everything to another proposal. Anyway, so we didn't get enough channels, so we need to do maximum search. I'm going to go in here and check that box. And, you know, the search step, no, yeah, that's fine. Let's run it now. This little, this little window will pop up. Now it's found 17. And so far in my um, use of this tool, I haven't found any more than 17 for the, the A band, but that's just in the 
zip code I'm searching in, uh, your area may not have as many uh, digital television stations, or it might have more. Um, 17 is pretty good because that would be for a 16 channel system with one spare. All right, so now I'm, I'm just going to abort because I don't think it's going to find any more than 17 and I don't have five days to wait. So it, it actually found quite a few 17 channel proposals. And uh, what you can do is when you click that export button, I would just delete everything after the 17s. So now we have a we have 14 proposals of 17 channels each. So then I would go ahead and configure these in, uh, program them into your system, and if you run into an issue, you've got one spare. But uh, if you run into more than one issue, you're going to need to move everything to a new proposal until the problem goes away. I haven't had to do that. I've only using the first one. Having done my due diligence, searched for local sources of interference, using this tool, I haven't I have had to only use the spare, and then that sixteen those sixteen channels have been good over a period of months. So that is the process for correctly um, selecting frequencies for your wireless microphone system.